for all the entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, people working in jobs that don't want to be an entrepreneur, but just want to be the best version of themselves. What, what are those couple things that you want them to start to think about consciously over the next 365 days? So a year from today, they're not in the same position, living the same issues, same uncertainties. What are those traits that you think can be worked on, should be worked on, and aren't talked about enough because they're overlooked? This is going to, again, seem nuanced and complicated, but I think it will land, especially if somebody's watching this, is my intuition. The number one way to get happier is to take on 100% full accountability. If you literally wake up, this is very nuanced, so I'm going to say it nice and slow. If you wake up and say, everything is my fault, when people hear that, they think that will make you more unhappy. I'm a piece of shit. I'm a loser. It's not true. It is if you don't understand it, which is why I'm breaking it down slow. If you say everything is my fault, you get optimistic in knowing that you can then fix it. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal. The reason I believe that I'm happy is because I think everything's my fault. And so what happens is if you're blaming your parents, which so many do, you're in big trouble. Because guess what? They had parents too. Mm -hmm. So blame your grandparents. You know, VCon. I said, fuck your grandparents. And the whole crowd was like, what the fuck just <laughs> happened? And I was like, no, no, but let me explain what I'm actually trying to say, right? Which is you can't be mad at your dad knowing that your grandma fucked him up. And oh, by the way, there's great grandparents. So I think it, what I want for everyone is to be fully accountable. It's like the amount of people that blame the president. What a joke. Their parents. I get it, but it's not going to be productive. The second you realize, like, sure, you could have a lot of anxiety and resentment towards your mother, but you're now grown. And maybe instead of buying a new Xbox, you can go do therapy, meditation, exercise. And by the way, you don't need to pay for things. Why don't you go outside and take a two-hour walk, put on some headphones, because I know you have those, mm -hmm. and listen to a podcast that's free. This right here. Listen to it every day. I'm not joking. I'm trying to get you some views. Appreciate listen it. Listen to this every day. Like, it will, like, and so get positivity in your ears. Become fully accountable to your life. It's not the government or your parents' fault. It's they've put you in certain situations, but you have the strength and capacity to make it better. You just do. And once that happens, it becomes such a good life. You're mad at your husband? Talk to him. Instead of being resentful and acting out, go and have a couples therapy session. Or if you can't afford it, because I always hedge against that. Because yep. again, the comments will be like, oh, you have therapy, but 200 bucks. Okay. How about just being kind and candorous to your spouse? Sit them down and be like, I don't like when you do this. I don't like that you're doing that. I don't appreciate that after you're done with work, you go hang out with your buddies. Like, talk. Because then he or she may say, well, I don't like that. And, you know, communication. Yeah. Get the poison out of your body. That's another thing I would want. Get the poison out of your body. That poison, those feelings, you've got to say them. Now, if you wait until you're on full tilt and you're like, mom, you're a fucking piece of shit. You fucked me up. That's not going to be productive. Right. Mom's not going to be like, oh, thank you. <laughs> no, no. You got to get into the right place to have these talks. And they're not going to be receptive. But I haven't been, uh, like, in my life when people have come to me, like, it's not a natural, like, it's hard. Yeah. And I'm very accountable. And even for me, it's like, mm, I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, you get defensive. <laughs> like, you know, I don't like that. <laughs> but, but I've gotten really good at being like, mm, like, and I like it. And, like, now I really appreciate the feedback and like we just all have to go there anyway. Accountability and kind candor communication on some of the shit that's inside of you and understanding the following sentence. And if you do none of that, I don't give a fuck. Like I'm not your fucking dad. You're not my brother. You know what I mean? Like, like I get so mad when people get mad at people that are trying to help them. Mm -hmm. Fuck you, okay? Knock yourself out. Sit in your fucking room and be angry for the rest of your life. What the fuck do you want? Yeah. Stand on your own two emotional feet. I want it for you. I will be out here doing shit like this forever. Like many, by the way, I'm not special. There are many, many, many of thousands of people out there navigating, trying to put good shit out there, right? Yep. And, uh, you know, you got to find the person that does it for you. But like, man, complaining is fucking loser shit. It's dangerous. It's self-deprecating. Well, self-deprecating could be cute. 
It's self, it's, in jest. it's, yes, in jest, to your point. But that's, you know, like, comp but, you know, at least self-deprecation, even in jest or in reality, there's a level of accountability. That's like not loving yourself enough. Yeah. Complaining is, my boss will never let me succeed. Are you out of your fucking mind? Your boss at a random company? There's 87 trillion companies. Yeah. Quit. Oh, easy for you to say, Gary, I have a mortgage, I have this. No, no, okay. So tonight, instead of doing whatever the fuck you're doing for four hours, that isn't what I'm about to tell you, go on LinkedIn and email 100 people. Mm -hmm. Update your LinkedIn account. Post content about your expertise in financial services or in real estate or in bagel making and let somebody find you. You can do shit. Yep. You can do shit. And I'm not sitting here trying to motivate you. This is a... I, I actually get weird when people are like, you're motivational. I'm like, I'm practical. <laughs> I'm not motivational. I'm, pr I'm obsessed with practicality. Yeah. Like, if you hate your job, you can either drink alcohol to escape it, you can find another loser friend and complain with them and be like, <laughs> or you can go home and pound LinkedIn until your next job comes that pays you more so you can leave. Or to your point, you can take a self-awareness moment and say, what am I doing at my job that is keeping me from growing? Well, you're going fucking 301. I'm just trying to show them okay. how easy it is to get away. Fair. Kudos to you. You took it up a notch. Yeah, or you could be like, why does this? Well, maybe because I'm a gossip in the office and causing trouble. No wonder fucking boss is mad at me. Maybe because, how about this one? Maybe because I know that I'm working home, remote for three days a week and I'm really only working four hours. <laughs> oh, that's on there, huh? mm -hmm. You fucking full of shit fuckers. How about that one? <laughs> fuck my job. I'm like, you don't work. Mo the fuck do you want them to do? Most, most bosses and leaders, they want their best talent. If you're the best, they're going to move you to the top. And by the way, let's go the other side. I know a lot of bosses hold down talent that's better than them because they don't want them to jump them. I know that. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking like, about it as a- I know. As a I know. Founder. I know. Notice where I just jumped in. Sorry, you're right. No, you're, you're, you're like me. The only even, thing you care about is the logo. Yeah. I'm agnostic. I don't care if you're my brother-in-law, my best friend, or somebody I met yesterday. Whoever can be the best player on the field, this is why I'm going to win Super Bowls when I buy the Jets. I'm agnostic. Remember, no I'm, emotion. I'm going in on you. I got it. You got a spot for me. I got it. Me. But you're talking like a founder. A lot of these people. You're right. You, right? You're you've right. Seen it? No, you're yeah, right. I've you've never seen, been a boss. I'm a founder. And, and you know this. You've seen it in your organization. Yes. You've seen it. I know it right now. There are people right now in my company that I know are suppressing the person underneath them because the person underneath them is more talented. I mean, you're right. So there's a lot of things, but in that scenario, that person that's being, even if they're right, even if they're 100% right, their boss is doing it, great, go get another job. Mm -hmm. You can do it. You can do it. Mm -hmm.